if there was a conversion therapy ban in place in Ohio where you are, what would you do, Alistair? Well, I think that that would be absolutely straightforward. I, that, you know, the exception clause, if you like, you know, judge for yourselves whether it's right for us to pay attention to you or to obey God. <laughs> Greetings, welcome to Berean Babs Binth and all. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin, Alistair Big. As you know, Pastor Alistair Big failed to give a grandmother a good advice. And everybody has been out critiquing him, rightfully so. So, in case some of you are not aware of uh, what transpired, so I'm going to share with you... Um, what he shared with the grandmother and then we're going to get to a response of somebody else who asked Alistair Begg similar to this type of question how he responded so we are out here asking what went wrong Pastor Alistair Begg so this will just jog your memory that way you know exactly uh what we're talking about okay here we go does your grandson understand your uh, belief in Jesus, yes. Does your grandson understand that your belief in Jesus makes it such that you can't countenance uh, in any affirming way the choices that he has made in life? Yes. I said, well, then, okay, as long as he knows that, then I suggest that you do go to the ceremony, mm -hmm. and I suggest that you buy them a gift. Hmm. Oh, she said, H -h 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 what? She was caught off guard. I said, well, here's the thing. They're, you're not going to, your, your love for them may catch them off guard, but your absence will simply reinforce the fact that they said these people are what I always thought, judgmental, critical, unprepared mm -hmm. to countenance anything. And it is a fancy, it is a fine line, isn't it? It really yeah. is. And people need to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. But I think we're going to take that risk. We're going to have to take that risk a lot more if we want to build bridges into the hearts and lives of those who don't understand Jesus and, and don't understand that he is a king. Okay, so that's the advice that uh, Pastor Beg decided to give to the grandmother who was contemplating if she should go to uh, her grandson who is having a trans wedding. So we have already gone through this video, so we're not going to go back to it. However, as you can see, Alistair Big, he's actually saying like, oh, we need to be building bridges to people who might not believe the same things that we believe. And he also used the word like orientation. As Christians, we need to get rid of the word orientation. OK, because we are excusing something that is outright sinful and then we're replacing it with the word orientation. This is how the culture is co-opting us to be using the language that the Bible does not use. And there has been uh, some pushback people saying that, oh, what about uh, a wedding? How come Christians also go to non-Christians wedding and believers are marrying and non-believers? What about that? You have to understand marriage is a gift to mankind, not only Christians. Even if somebody who is a professing believer marries uh, an atheist, marries a, a Muslim, marries somebody else, that is still a wedding. That is still a marriage. But what you have done, you have married somebody who is an equally yoked to you. But in the eyes of God, that is still marriage because marriage is between male and female. Okay? So, Pastor Alistair Beg was asked this similar question at some point. And I'm going to share with you that way you can see how he responded. So I'm out here asking and wondering what happened to this Alistair Big. Where is this Pastor Alistair Big? So here is uh, how Pastor Big responded to this question. Here we go. I'm going to ask you a controversial question now. If there was a conversion therapy ban in place in Ohio where you are, and it was very broad, and it meant that by urging an individual in your church to embrace the Christian sexual ethic, you would be breaking that law. What would you do, Alistair? Well, I think that that would be absolutely straightforward. I, that, you know, the exception clause, if you like, you know, judge for yourselves whether it's right for us to pay attention to you or to obey God. Um, we don't want to be hauling that out every 15 minutes. But in an instant like this, instance such as that, it wouldn't even be a question for me. I mean, I'm facing that right now in many ways. I mean, because the material that I've just done in the second half of Romans 1, um, you know, goes out on the airwaves. And uh, I'm, I'm amazed uh, or perhaps disappointed that it hasn't actually uh, reached into the, the realm about which we're talking. And we've been protected from that. 
But I'm of the conviction that eventually, unless this thing turns around, some pastor, and hopefully it'll be a sensible soul, will end up having to go to jail for violating uh, the commands of the state. And of course, the Scots, as you know, have a very long history of doing that, especially against kings and authorities, and not always uh, desirable, but nevertheless, no, it's not controversial to me. It's not even a question. Um, the Bible is the Bible. We have to be prepared to say your sexual biological framework is unalterable, as given by God. Um, you say that the children are born perfect. We say that the Bible says that folly is bound up in the heart of a child. Therefore, I wouldn't be surprised when teenagers come to me with all kinds of ideas, all kinds of complexities, all kinds of fears and failures compounded by the social media and so on. And uh, we want to be able to uh, speak with uh, tenderness and yet with great clarity. And that's what they're looking for. And that's not what they're receiving, except from the agenda uh, on the other side that is invasive in social media and through media in general. And that's why that noise and that voice sounds so clearly. And the Christian voice, which is then characterized uh, as being vitriolic and unkind, we need some good models in, in, in the culture where people say, well, I, I know he holds those views or I know she holds those views, but he's actually a really decent soul, you know. So you can see that Pastor Alistair Begg has already dealt with this type of subject. He, according to him, he was preaching uh, Romans 1. So obviously it's going to tackle this issue. However, when he had the opportunity to leave out everything he just articulated in this response, Pastor Alistair Begg gave the grandmother an advice that she should go to that wedding. Not only just go to the wedding, be sure to get a gift. Be sure to give the grandson a gift. It should not be so as far as Christians uh, are concerned because the word of God does not change. We don't have to change. Our circumstances are going to change. The situations on the ground is going to change. But the word of God does not change. The scripture is clear. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Anything outside of that, God does not recognize. The state might recognize that. Other people might recognize that, okay? People can be all loving, all lovey-dovey, whatever they want to call it, but in the eyes of God, that is an abomination. So we cannot be out here excusing an abomination. We cannot be out here calling something that's abomination, calling it orientation. We cannot be out here thinking that, oh, we can just be nice. Let's just buy a gift. Quote, unquote, we want to be able to share the gospel with them. No, no, no. Because God is not going to uh, be on your case saying like, oh, how come you didn't go to the, to, to, to the wedding? No, he's not going to judge you that. If anything, it will be the opposite. Why were you going to that wedding? Because that is not a wedding. We know what uh, God has already articulated what the wedding is. So I already did a video on this one, so we're not going to go through all that. But I just wanted to share with you guys that what we said about Pastor Alistair Big was actually true. Everything that we know about him, he's been a good, faithful preacher and he has already tackled this subject but this time around i do not understand how pastor alistair Begg failed in fact this video was recorded uh in april of 23 and the advice to the grandmother was in september of 2023 if you can believe it pastor alistair Begg is doubling down i do not understand why he just doesn't want to come clean with this issue but this time around, you have American Family Association. They have uh, severed ties with him. They've had him for over 12 years. And they've issued uh, a statement that they are going their separate ways with Alistair Big. So I'm going to share this video with you. That way you guys can hear what they had to say. We ended up having this information after we had already recorded the previous video. So this is an update. But stay tuned. We're going to do a full live show uh, digging deeper to this issue. Here we go. So people heard that answer and uh, people began to call us. Hey, what are you going to do? Did you hear what Alist Alistair Begg said? Uh, what's your opinion, uh, American Family Radio, of what he said? So that's what I mean by it forced us <clears throat> to... Uh, take a, a hard look at this and make a decision <clears throat> on what, what, if anything, we were going to do about it. Uh, so, Ed, you and Walker had a phone conversation with uh, not Alistair Begg himself, but his team. Is that fair? To call yes. Him okay, uh, yesterday. Yes. We, we, wanted, we wanted to give him an opportunity to say, I messed up right there. Right. And, and uh, I, I think it's the wrong, I said the wrong thing and I, I'd like to recant. Sure. And, and we, and in any case, we want to do the Christian thing. And, 
in, in as much as we can. Sometimes with public statements, you can't get in touch with the person who made them. But because they're public, you can comment publicly. But we have had such a long and fruitful relationship with uh, Truth For Life and Alistair Begg. We wanted to have some sort of interaction. And you are going to celebrate the marriage when you show up at a wedding. I mean, let's face it. You show up at a wedding and you go to the reception. You are going to. And you bring a gift. And you bring a gift. You're going to walk up to that couple and say, congratulations. You're going to shake their hands, these two men. Yeah. And you're going to shake their hands and say, congratulations. That is a, a, a sinful act. You are approving of what they're doing. In my personal opinion, you could be culpable in God's eyes if those people go to hell because you would not preach the gospel to them and preach the gospel of repentance and faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and for those who didn't tune in, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago, um, uh, our team did talk to the Truth For Life team yesterday right. on the phone uh, with an attempt to to uh, have them and have Pastor Begg um, admit that, that that he gave bad advice. Right. And he shouldn't have, uh, but they They, they doubled do down. They doubled down. So yep. that, that is what mm. it is. All right, guys, that is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.